I want to talk about a line from Falcon and the Winter Soldier that felt off to me. My wife and I made this just for you. Everything's completely clean. She made it really nice and cozy. On its face, nothing crazy. A nice guy giving food and shelter to the Flag Smashers. But that one word, clean, before anything else felt strange. And then when you pay attention to the plot, the issue of public health starts popping up a lot without really being addressed. The Flag Smashers are stealing vaccines, but it isn't made clear what those vaccines are for. They are just vaccines. And when our main characters talk about them, they mostly say resources. And then the Flag Smashers leader, Mama Donia, dies from tuberculosis. But as Eric from New Rockstars pointed out in his video, no one ever talks about the disease on screen. It's all voiceover and ADR. And you know what that means. We have an Aculos situation. For those unfamiliar, the Aculos was a plot device from Disney Plus's Artemis Fowl movie. The movie's plot revolves around all of the main characters trying to find a magic acorn that we almost never see anyone talk about. We hear them talk about it, but we never see it. What it certainly seems like happened is that Disney rewrote the movie to include the Aculos, but could not film reshoots. So they used ADR, or additional dialogue replacement, to put the Aculos into the beginning of the story. It was very strange, I made an entire video on it. It's wonderful. So if the tuberculosis was the replacement, that makes sense. Because while TB is a big deal, there is treatment for it. Vaccines exist, antibiotics exist. So it's kind of strange that Carly needed the super scientist to make one for her. Again, not saying it's not a big deal worldwide. It is, but a treatment exists. And all of the dialogue in this scene about Mama Donia dying is spoken off screen. We never see anyone say tuberculosis, even though it kind of seems like a big deal and the TV outbreak should be driving the entire plot. So that's strange. And that leaves me wondering, if this is an Aculos situation and dialogue is being replaced, what were the characters talking about originally? And why go to the trouble to replace it? So I did a teeny tiny bit of digging, one Google, and came up with this article from February of 2020, aka The Before Times. It's by a site called Murphy's Multiverse. They write, The earliest of plot leaks speculation and made up stuff all shared a common thread. Some sort of device unleashing a pandemic on the populace. In some cases, it was the Mad Bomb. In others, it was a terrorist group unleashing a bioweapon. Whichever one you liked best, the rumors were certainly out there that the show was set to feature something of the sort. Over the past two weeks, I've heard a growing number of whispers that this is no longer the case. And that would explain things. A pandemic. Maybe originally, Mama Donia was dying from something else. Some sort of disease that created a pandemic originating from a bioweapon. Maybe a made-up comics disease. There are a few Marvel Comics diseases, like the Legacy Virus or the Transmode Virus, both of which come from X-Men stories that wouldn't really work here. And then there's the carrion virus, which is a Spider-Man thing, so it's probably off limits here. But let's call it Virus X. In the comics, Virus X was a super deadly virus created by MODOK. The scooper also mentions the Mad Bomb, a Captain America and Falcon storyline from the 70s. In it, a scientist creates a bomb that emits a sonic pulse that makes everyone within earshot become enraged and violent. It's a lot like the first Kingsman movie. There's more to the storyline than that, including the revelation that Steve Rogers had an ancestor who fought in the Revolutionary War named Stephen Rogers, but for the purposes of this video, think Kingsman. The Mad Bomb also nearly played a big part in the first draft of Captain America 3. Speaking to Entertainment Weekly, Anthony Russo said, There was a period where we did discuss the third act that revolved around the Mad Bomb from Cap Mythology. It didn't have anything to do with Civil War, and if we couldn't get Downey in the very, very early conversations before we nailed him, somebody pitched the idea of a third act that revolved around the Mad Bomb, which makes people crazy. It almost like zombifies them, but not literally. And you can maybe see the roots of that in the opening where Crossbones attempts to steal a chemical weapon that we never really see activated or hear from again. And while I think the Falcon and the Winter Soldier pandemic may have shared some elements with the Mad Bomb, I don't necessarily think that's what this would be. I think whatever we were dealing with here is more of a plain old virus. That's the vibe I'm getting from the show. You get the disease, you die, no mania or anything like that. But okay, why does this matter? Why bother digging up old storylines that aren't part of the show anymore? Well, 
because I think there was a more prominent storyline involving a pandemic, and it would clear up what three episodes in are my two biggest issues with Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And I want to be clear, there is a lot to like about this show. Falcon and Bucky have great chemistry, I like how they incorporated Isaiah Bradley's story in the MCU, and I'm really digging John Walker. He's exactly what I was hoping for. Not pure evil, just a generally well-meaning guy who has a short fuse and cannot deal with the pressure of being Captain America. His journey so far has been the most compelling part of the show for me. But the two things that I'm not super into. First, you have the Flag Smashers. I know I'm not alone here in saying that their ideology doesn't quite work for me. They've been explained to us a couple times in a couple different ways, and most people land on two things. One, the Flag Smashers think things were better during the blip, the five years between when Thanos snapped half of the population away and everyone blipped back into existence. And two, the Flag Smashers want a world without borders. The second lines up with how the Flag Smasher usually works in the comics. He's an anti-nationalist terrorist. And that's fun. Most of my favorite Captain America antagonists are what if Captain America but blank? What if Captain America but government stooge? What if Cap was sent to Vietnam and tortured? What if Captain America but the serum was bad and turned him into a Nazi? Soviet Cap? Nazi Cap? There's a million of them. But I don't think this show has really explained the Flag Smashers well enough. They thought things were better during the blip? Why? What was it like? Were there actually no borders? Show, don't tell, usually a good idea. And the Flag Smasher's ideology also seems to be tied to refugees, people who were displaced by everyone returning. Makes sense. These people seem to live in refugee camps that are underserved. We see in episode three that the GRC, or Global Repatriation Council, is holding back supplies for some reason. And I believe the missing element that could tie all the Flag Smasher's motivations together would be some sort of very specific scarce resource. Something that everybody needs, but is controlled by governments and only given to specific people. Something like a vaccine for a pandemic. And if the government was prioritizing people with money and status and leaving out impoverished people like these new blip refugees, now the Flag Smashers make a lot of sense. Their actions become way more sympathetic, Robin Hood types like they're portrayed in the show. After all, the idea of vaccine equity is a real issue that we're dealing with right now. Who should get a vaccine first? Which people? Which jobs? Which countries? Already in the US, communities of color are being underserved. So if you apply that to other countries, you have entire marginalized populations within countries who need vaccines but aren't prioritized, so they're more affected by the disease. You maybe even have countries who don't have enough vaccines, further exacerbating racial and class disparities. So if the Flag Smashers are saying, during the blip, there wasn't as much of an emphasis on borders or nationalism because of a renewed sense of solidarity that came from the snap. And during the blip, there was a global pandemic, and because of global unity, distributing a vaccine was a lot more fair. Everyone that needed one was able to get one, regardless of country or class. But once people blipped back, resources were now scarce, and certain countries came back into global power. People like Carly were forced into these refugee camps and were not given access to the vaccines, so they were forced to steal them to keep their communities safe from this pandemic. Now you have an antagonist with a purpose. The issue is, Falcon and the Winter Soldier seems to be able to say all of that except the pandemic part, because it's so similar to what we're currently going through. Even though we, the audience, know the Flag Smashers are stealing vaccines and giving them away to people, the show can't say that there is currently a pandemic in the MCU that explains why the vaccine scarcity is such an issue. And I've heard people theorize that maybe the Flag Smashers were originally going to set off the bomb that releases the virus, but I just don't see it. At least not from what we know about these Flag Smashers. They aren't cruel. This guy is really nice to them. I think they were always intended to be sympathetic. And then the other thing I don't love, Zemo. Now don't get me wrong, I adore this Zemo. The costume, mwah. He's a baron now, and he's got this wonderful smugness that I always associate with the character. It's great, but what I'm not so sure about is his role in the story. Breaking Zemo out of jail doesn't make a lot of sense to me. And this comes back to my issue with the Flag Smashers. I don't think the show has made the case for why the Flag Smashers are a global threat especially in a world with the big three, 
androids, aliens, and wizards. Like, these guys can just kick really good. Why does a group of eight super soldiers that steal vaccines require the full attention of the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, Captain America, Battlestar, Teehee, and how is it such an immediate issue that when our heroes come up empty, Sam and Bucky break a mass murderer out of prison? It just doesn't feel like that kind of threat. Like, it's not great if vaccines are being stolen usually, but something like that wouldn't usually be a huge deal. Unless... The Flag Smashers were stealing vaccines that everyone needed immediately because of a global pandemic. Then this becomes a big issue, something that would get everyone's attention. People are stealing vaccines, your vaccines. And if the Flag Smashers start stealing vaccines that are eventually going to go to America, you could be damn sure that the politicians are sending their Captain America to get those vaccines back. So here's what I'm guessing we would have gotten what I'm calling the Virus X storyline. First, Thanos snaps away half of the population. Then, Virus X begins spreading through Europe. It kills a lot of people. Then, a vaccine is created and distributed. Then, the blip happens, half of the population returns. Now, vaccines start being prioritized by country and income. The virus ravages poorer communities. The virus causes Mama Donia's death, Carly becomes radicalized and creates the Flag Smashers, and the Flag Smashers start stealing vaccines and giving them to blip refugees, and then America gets involved and the story begins. Could this storyline come back in future episodes? Like I said, I'm recording this as of episode 3, which is halfway through the story. It could, but I really doubt it. Specifically because Mama Donia has already died from tuberculosis in this story. That's probably the disease that the vaccines were for, and no one has talked about tuberculosis yet outside of one small conversation about how it's ravaging some of these communities, so I think if it was supposed to be a big part of this story, we would have heard about it by now. I think there's a possibility that there are scenes from episodes 1 and 2 where people are talking about whatever this pandemic is that they just left out of the show. So I'm guessing these Flag Smashers are just going to be terrorists. And I'm wondering, because of the Mad Bomb connection, if an element of the plot that would be eventually revealed was that the GRC was purposefully holding vaccines back from the refugee communities to purge the quote-unquote undesirables, or even that Virus X would be revealed to have been created on purpose by some villain as a biological weapon to get rid of certain people like the Mad Bomb was in the comics. I think if that were the case, it would seem way too similar to certain vaccine-related conspiracy theories, and it would make sense that they scrubbed the plot altogether. Which is a real shame, because I think there's something really interesting to be said about vaccine equity in class that would resonate with a lot of people, even without a real-world pandemic. But alas, Marvel was too good. They managed to write a story about pandemics before, those are the biggest issues on the planet, and they became so real that we couldn't enjoy the fiction anymore. It's the uncanny valley, the thing that resembles real life so much that it makes us uncomfortable. Unless it's not, and I'm reading way too far into this, which is always a possibility. Also, Sharon Carter is being mind controlled by the power broker who is- Also, the Mad Bomb storyline from the comics is a riot. And not just because it's about a bomb that makes riots. It's also about a bizarre villain trying to destroy the bicentennial. And there is an extended cut of this video where I talk about him, and you can find that version of this video on Nebula. For those of you who don't already know, Nebula is a creator-owned subscription streaming service that I helped to create. And we partnered with this video's sponsor, CuriosityStream, for a bundle that gets you a year of CuriosityStream's high-quality documentaries about science and history, and this one called The Spies of War, which covers my favorite World War II story, that time we made a bunch of inflatable tanks to trick the planes. And if you want to get access to that bundle that includes Nebula and Curiosity Stream, a yearly subscription is only $15, which not only helps to support us, your favorite creators, but it also means you don't have to watch sponsor reads and you get to see exclusive Nebula Plus content. Here's a little tease. And this leads to a wonderful panel where Sam, I assume, screams at the top of his lungs, It hasn't happened yet, you scheming dum-dums! The link is in the video description. It's curiositystream.com slash Nando. Go check it out. 
As always, I have to give a humongous thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. You guys are amazing. There is no way I could do this without you guys. If you want to see your name up here, get access to videos early, maybe even join the book club, go to patreon.com slash nandoviewmovies, chuck in a couple bucks. I really appreciate it. Also, listen to my podcast, Mostly Nitpicking, where every week me and my co-hosts DJ and Diggins pick apart a piece of pop culture by looking exclusively at the details. We have done a very long episode on the Snyder Cut. We also did an episode about Godzilla vs. Kong, and we'll be covering all of the big releases for the rest of the year, including probably some sort of Falcon and the Winter Soldier recap episode. Last thing, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, TikTok, all of that stuff. I am Nando V Movies on all of those platforms. This entire video came from a tweet that led to a deep dive about what happened to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, whether or not it was rewritten and stuff like that. So Twitter is a great place to figure out what I'm going to be talking about in the future. That is all I've got. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.